Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I'm not having a good hair day. Oh, well, it is what it is. It's clean. It's clean. That's all I can say for it. It's clean. Well, tonight, I hope you had an awesome day. I hope you had an awesome Sunday. Tomorrow is a holiday for many. Um, I think I'm going to take it off as a holiday. Anyway, tonight we're going to do Psalm 29, and I am not going to be on here for very long. We're getting some storms in our area, and I'm the radio... I am the meteorologist in my house. I start watching the radar when the storms start rolling in. It's already getting dark, and it's not even 7.30 yet. So I thought I would hop on here a little bit early. I know I said I was going to be on here at 7.30. I see now that it's 7.28. Well, maybe I'm making up for all the times that I was late. When I said I would be here at 7.30 or 7 or even 8 o'clock, and I was late. Well, I'm early tonight. Okay, well, let's pray. Let's pray, and then we will do Psalm 29. We'll talk a little bit about it. I'm going to do a salvation message, and then I've got to get off of here and feed my child. All right, well, let's pray. God, we just thank you for all the many blessings that you have given us, God, that you are on your throne and you are in control, God. You are the great I am and you are the great Jehovah. God, thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider, our shelter in the storm. Thank you for being our strength and our refuge, God. God, you are magnificent and powerful and mighty and you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. You are loving and kind and compassionate and caring. You are trustworthy. You are faithful, God. You are a patient, God. You want none to perish. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we just pray for the lost. We just pray, God, that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth in their hearts and that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for uh, the prodigals, God, to remember the relationship that they had with you and to return and to repent and to have their relationship reconciled. God, we also pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. God, we just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. I'm just lifting up one family in particular, God. I don't even know their last name, but I just, I know who the family is, God. I just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. And God, um, just pray that they would feel your presence. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So many people to pray for. Just so many. Okay. Well, let's read Psalm 29. Yeah, I'm sorry I wasn't here last night. I can't remember what I was doing. Probably not anything worthy. But I just I don't remember. I think my head was stopped up last night. I don't know. I took allergy medicine today, and I feel a little bit better. Okay, Psalm 29. Praise to God in his holiness and majesty. And this is another Psalm of David. Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the, beauty, in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The glory, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them also skip like a calf. 
Lebanon and Sirloin, Sirion, Sirion like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, everyone says glory. The Lord sat enthroned at the flood and the Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. You know, God is so mighty. He is so mighty. And he does deserve all of our glory, honor, and praise. And so, okay. Okay, 29. I do have some study for that. A revelation of the Lord's majesty. This is about his majesty and glory and his power and his might that with his voice, he can break the cedars and his voice thunders and he is over many waters. Um, a revelation of the Lord's majesty is experienced by the psalmist in a powerful thunderstorm. David called to the mighty ones or heavenly beings to give to the Lord the glory and worship and worship do him. We worship the Lord when we submit ourselves to his will and purpose for our lives. And that is so true. He does want us to submit ourselves to his, his will and purpose for our lives and not our own. So that was just such, um, you know, it's talking about God's holiness and his majesty. How awesome is that? It's just so awesome. Well, okay. That was not a very long psalm. So I'm through with that. I think I would like to read something else. Maybe out of the New Testament. Let's just see where the Holy Spirit leads us. Let's talk about this. I, I like some numerology. And it says the significance of numbers in Scripture, like what does the number stand for? So it says the number one stands for unity, independent existence. And it talks about that in Genesis 2.24 and Deuteronomy 6.4. And then two, two stands for an addition or strength or help. And that's in Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Three, the simplest compound unity, the number for God. So three is the number for God. Three is the number of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So three is the number for God, Matthew 28, 19. Four, the world with its four seasons and directions, like, let's see, spring, summer, fall, and winter. That's, that's the four seasons. And then you have east, west, north, and south, the four directions. And that's in Revelation 7, 1. And five, mankind with the various five-membered parts of the body. So, we got five, well, actually we have ten. With one hand, we have five fingers. I'm not quite sure what that's talking about, but Leviticus 14, 14 through 16. Six, evil, failure, it falls short of the number seven, which represents perfection. So I've heard before that six is the number of mankind. Revelations 13, 18, seven, perfection or completeness. 
a number representing earth crowned with heaven, Revelation 1-4. And then 10, five doubled and thus human completeness. So maybe 10 fingers, 10 toes. Revelation 2.10. And then it skips. It skips 8 and it skips 11. And it skips to 12. 12. God's perfect manif manifestation of himself to the created order. Revelation 21.12. So that was kind of... Uh, that was kind of interesting. I ended up in Revelation. Now I am in, let's read 2 Peter 3. Write down what we're doing. So I don't do it again tomorrow. God's promise is not slack. Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle, in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? And that is happening right now. There are scoffers out there that go, Jesus isn't going to come. What are y'all waiting on, Christians? Jesus isn't going to come. But he is. And this is going to tell you why. Why he hasn't come yet. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So God destroyed the world uh, once with a flood. There was so much evil and God was so disgusted that he destroyed the world with a flood. This time he's going to destroy the world with fire. And this day is coming. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years in a thousand years as one day. In other words, in heaven, they don't have the timeline that we do. They don't, their timeline is not like ours. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering. God is patient toward us, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. So the reason why Jesus has not come is because God is waiting. God is drawing people back to him because God doesn't want anyone to perish. And that's why he sent Jesus to die for every one of us because he does not want us to perish. I'm sorry, but I look like a floating head. Well, now my head's cut off on the other. Okay. You don't like the floating head look. All right. So he's not willing that any should perish, and that's why he sent Jesus to die for us. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are all, that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire and the elements will melt with fervent heat? 
Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for the new heavens. This picture behind me is the new Jerusalem. I did not do that picture. I acquired it when I worked at the downtown office of the promise. Um, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, to his promise, look for the new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. So in this new heaven, in this new earth, there will be righteousness. There will be not the things that we have in this world that disturb our peace, that disturb our love, that disturbs compassion, that disturbs all the things that God wants us to be. We will not have to worry about it there. Everything will be in place. It will be perfect. There will be perfect unity. Like churches struggle to be united, it will be this bride of Christ will be totally united. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, without spot and blameless. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures." So people do, they do twist the scriptures. To me, everything in the scripture is black and white. There is no gray area. If God says, do not sin, he doesn't want us to sin. And Jesus said more than once in the New Testament to people that were sinners, go and sin no more. Your sins are forgiven. Now go and sin no more. Because he doesn't want us to live in the bondage of sin. He wants us to be free from that bondage of sin. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. So we're back to glory. We're back to, to him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. So the Holy Spirit led me to 2 Peter 3. But maybe somebody needed to be reminded that it may look like Jesus is not coming, but Jesus is coming back. He is coming back to get us. And when he does come, we need to be ready. We need to be living our lives the way that God wants us to live them. Are we ever going to be perfect? No, we're not. And are we constantly learning things? Yes, we are. But we need, um, our pastor talked about repentance this morning. We need repentance. We need to have a repentant heart. And that doesn't mean that you're asking for forgiveness, then you're turning back to your sin. That means that you are asking for forgiveness and you are walking away from that sin. You are headed in the opposite direction of that sin. So that's what repentance is. Okay, well, let's do a salvation message. I think I'm going to do it like this. I was going to do it a different way, but... I need to get off of here so that I can go look at the radar. Okay, so this is the E-band, the E3 resources. Okay, this isn't anything that I made up. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. Romans 1.16 
So, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't pick up my bracelet. I was just reading. Okay, there's gold. The gold color represents God, the creator of all who lives in heaven. The Bible says that God is light and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God loves you and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. So then we have the next one, which is the dark color represents sin, which is doing wrong things. God says that all have sinned and fall short of, the, of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty for our sin is death or separation from God forever. So the first question mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? So we move to the red. Sorry, my nose itches. The red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life. But he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life with God. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. So that's the good news. So then we move to the white with the red question mark. The white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash our sins away? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. So the question mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him? So if you have not Repeat this prayer after me, and you can receive Jesus as your Savior right now. You don't have to wait. You can do it right now. God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so the green color, the green color represents growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the area of growth. So we have all these symbols on this bracelet. We have a heart. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that we love our neighbors as ourselves. Love God, love people. Read the Bible each day to learn more about God and his love. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with him. Then we have the drop of water. When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person, like being born all over again. And then you have the fellowship hands. Hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. 
church is a good place to start. And then share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins when you trust in him. Tell as many people as you can. So if you did accept Jesus as your Savior, then um, welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, His Son. So today is your spiritual birthday. All right. And if and oh, already went over the, already went over the things about reading the Bible and praying and and praising. Also praise. Okay, well, let's do God's blessing. In Numbers, uh-oh, I lost my little thing. Numbers 6, 24, oh, there it is, it's hiding. 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I might get that memorized someday. We all need some peace, especially this day and time. We are at the great falling away of uh, belief and we are at the great spiritual awakening, which is so exciting to see more and more people come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. All right, well, I am going to pray. This is just going to be a blanket prayer, and I've got to go get dinner for my child. God, we just thank you, and we praise you, God. You are so mighty and magnificent, and there is no God like you. I just pray for anyone that comes on here that you would bless their families abundantly, God, that you would protect them, that you would provide for them, God. I pray the same thing for my family. I pray that you would lead, God, and direct us every day, God. Order our steps. Help us to... Uh, give you all the glory, honor, and praise that you deserve. No, oh, I think the storm just got here. I heard the wind come up. God, please protect us in this storm. God, just give us the boldness to go out and share the gospel of Jesus and to share your truths, God. Help us to be more and more the person that you want us to be every day. Please continue to conform us and transform us and help us to stay close to Jesus. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, my pray and share warriors, I am going to get off of here. I know I haven't even been on here for 30 minutes. This was very quick tonight. The wind just came in. So it's time for me to be a meteorologist. A lot of good it does. But anyway, it makes me feel better to know where the storm is. Um, have an awesome rest of your night. An awesome tomorrow, especially if you have a day off tomorrow. If not, have an awesome day tomorrow working. And much love and cyber hugs. Till I see you again. Good night.